My name is Mark Walsh from Integration Training. This is a short video on how we learn and how to improve our learning. It's essentially an extract from a book that I'm writing this year called Embodying Leadership, How to Get Out of Your Head and On With Your Life. In the first chapter, um, I really go into how we learn. Learning is massively important because it underpins our whole life. We've been learning since we were children. and I believe if we stop learning, a part of us dies. Less philosophically, it's, it's also massively important for the modern workplace. So with everything changing constantly, we need to be constantly learning new skills. And what really defines intelligence and will define success, I believe, in the workplace, increasingly, is how quickly and deeply we're able to learn. So there's different kinds of learning. The one that's most privileged in the Western world is learning about things. So this is what I spent a lot of time at school doing at university is learning the theory, learning about things. My claim, however, is that's pretty limited. So um, let's say you want to drive, you can read the theory book, and you know, that's okay, but it's not until you go out there and have lessons that you actually learn to drive. Uh, it's get out on the road and practice. This, the same is true in many ways with leadership or relationships or any of the skills that we're using day to day. So that's skills learning, which is the second kind of learning. The third level of learning, the most fundamental, the level that um, will have the most change, the most impact in whatever you're doing, is learning at the level of who you are. If you can actually shift who you are, you can shift what you see and what you're capable of. This is what we call transformative learning. So I really like working at the level of who someone is, this level of being and learning. Um, I find that's what gets the best results, that's what leads to lasting change and, and creates the most fundamental shifts. Notice here that in the second and third levels of learning that I mentioned, the importance of practice, the importance of consciously doing something, either to build a skill or to build a different way of being. So uh, if you want to be more relaxed, reading a book about stress, that's not going to help that much. However, if you meditate every day for 15 minutes before work, six days a week, whatever it is, that practice will really um, build a different self. Sitting still, coming more into your back, physically as well as in the kind of narratives and stories we live in. Notice that in all this play, experimentation, what people sometimes now call prototyping is very important. So um, when you learn a language, for example, you uh, go into a bar and you chat to people and you get it wrong and you fall down, you get back up again and you keep trying and you, you play. And if you can have fun with that, all the better. Yeah. When uh, you learn to drive, you might go with your mum or your dad onto a back road and somewhere quiet and safe and just safely explore that way. Other ways of learning are modelling. So um, if you're learning a language, for example, it's really important to have other people that speak that language that you can model yourself on. Equally, if you're in a business and you can have a mentor who um, uh, supports you, encourages you and shows you a good model of, of what a skill looks like, uh, then that can be really helpful. So we learn in not just individually, but through mentors, through communities of support particularly. Um, my own community of support around this work, one of them has been Newfield. They're a network of coaches and leadership trainers founded by Julio Elia and um, my friend Abudi Shabi has been an influence on me in this regard. So a lot of what I'm saying really in this, this, this video comes from them, so I want to acknowledge that. Um, in Aikido, which I studied, for example, this idea of who taught you is so important that that's the question someone will ask when they meet you in Aikido. They'll say, who was your teacher? Uh, this idea of lineage, they call it in Aikido, is massively important. And the other question I'll ask is, is how long you've been practicing? So um, again, this idea of it's practical, it's hours, and, and practice doesn't just mean habit, it means consciously trying to refine something. Shugyo, they call this in Aikido. Another form of learning that's really important is immersion. So um, when I was in, living in Brazil, for example, I was absolutely immersed in Brazilian culture, Brazilian friends, I was doing martial arts with Brazilians, had a Brazilian girlfriend, all those things. And it really speeded up how quickly I learned Brazilian Portuguese. Um, and also the whole way of being of, of that culture. I'm smiling thinking of it, actually. So um, immer immersing yourself in, in a particular culture, in a particular thing you want to learn can really help. Um, the community of support is massive. Learning is a social endeavor, not just um, an individual thing. So a question might be watching this, in order to learn, what teachers do you need to find? And what communities do you need to immerse yourself in? 
that might not be um, like a big sensei or Aikido teacher. It might be more like, um, let's say you want to learn play and you have uh, a five-year-old niece. Hang out with your niece. Hang out with her and her friends. Learn to play. Yeah, they'll model that for you. So a lot of what I'm talking about comes from um, an organization I work with called New Field. And Julio Alaya was the founder of that. And my, my friend Abudi Shabi, who's a great coach in London, has been influential for me um, in this work. So I want like a quick nod to New Field by way of my own uh, lineage in this work. So there are certain things which can help or hinder our learning. We can call these friends or enemies of learning. So an enemy of learning might be, for example, if you need to know too much, that can actually get in the way of learning, as can the opposite, sort of not worrying about it. You know? Addiction to lightness or heaviness. So a lot of these are polarities, and it's about um, being in the middle. And if you're, for example, you're too heavy, you take too seriously, then you won't learn. Uh, equally, if you're just silly and joking all the time, then uh, you will have difficulties learning as well. So where's that, that, that sweet spot in the middle? Being an expert, so this is a trap I fall into as a trainer regularly. Um, that can really get in the way of learning. If you say, I know. In Zen, they say, empty your cup so it can be filled. To the state of not knowing is really important for learning. Uh, and in fact, the beginning of any, any learning anything is declaring yourself incompetent. So I'd ask you that now. What, what do you need to declare yourself incompetent in? For example, you might say, you know what? I'm really bad at relationships and need to learn how to do that, yeah? Or I'm really bad at managing my time. Declaring yourself incompetent is the first step to learning. Then you'll need to give someone permission to teach. So um, trust is massively important, and the inability to trust can be another enemy of learning. So you see, learning at first, it seems like a cognitive affair, because that's how I've been raised, but the more you look at it, the more you go, wow, learning is actually social, interactive, emotional, embodied. For example, you um, need to please people all the time, it might be hard to learn. So these, these are enemies of learning. There's many more out there. I'll, I'll put a list on the comments of, of some more potential enemies of learning. It's quite individual. Equally, uh, any of these, and happily, any of these can be flipped to friends of learning. So think of something you've learned. Anything, language, sport, something at work, a computer program, whatever it is. And what's helped you learn that? For example, a sense of humor. When I was learning Portuguese, I had to kind of go into a bar and say the wrong thing and stumble and then, you know, laugh at myself and get back up again. So a certain determination there as well. These are all things that can really help learning. Being open-minded, having a certain humility, uh, that's a challenge for me. And, it, you know, like all of us, some of these are challenges. Um, and without that basic, please teach me something, something you're not going to learn. In many ways, the basis of learning is um, when we declare ourselves incompetent. So then you can really start to learn. Um, if I say, for example, you know what, I'm great at my job, but I'm rubbish at intimacy, rubbish at relationships. If you declare yourself incompetent, then you can go out there and start learning. Get some role models, find a community of support, immerse yourself, whatever you need to do. We all have our areas that we find difficult, so no one's perfect. And I'd say if you want to learn, then paying attention to this can be really critical. I hope this video has been useful. I'd love to re read your comments to respond to those, so, so please comment on this video. Uh, as I said, it's part of the book, Embodying Leadership, How to Get Out of Your Head and On With Your Life. If you're interested in learning from an organizational point of view, uh, then please get in touch. It's mark at integrationtraining.co.uk, or you can find us on the website below, www.integrationtraining.co.uk. Thank you.